Eleven years ago, an animated series, executive produced by Steven Spielberg and created by the team behind Tiny Toon Adventures, was unleashed onto the world and wowed us with a sharp sense of humor and appealing characters. That was none other than Animaniacs, and to celebrate it, I'm going to devote an entire month to it. So welcome to Animaniacs Month! And to begin this month off, I'm actually going to start at the end. With the huge success of the series, a movie was inevitable, and a number of possibilities have been tossed around at Warner Brothers Animation. The Christmas movie revolving around the Warners was considered, and they even thought about plopping them down into historical periods like World War II and the Revolutionary War. One concept that was considered involved the Warners being placed into the story of Oliver Twist. Wondering Warner's Wii, meanwhile, was to be set in medieval times, and involved the Warners tracking down the heir to the throne, and even would have introduced a fourth Warner sibling. One that probably came close to getting made was Hooray for Hollywood, in which the Warners tried to get a movie produced, but it ultimately became the excellent two-parter Hooray for North Hollywood. Finally, Wacko's Wish was Greenland, resulting in the excellent cap-off to the series. This basically brings as much of the Animaniacs characters as possible for it's a mad, 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 mad world-like scenario as they chase after a wishing star. This was an ingenious way to give everybody the necessary attention and resulted in a very exciting and funny tale. Even though this was an entirely new story, not taking place on the Warner Brothers studio lot or utilizing the familiar Animaniac structure, these were still the familiar characters we grew to love over the years. The story of the wishing star took advantage of everyone's personalities developed over the course of the series as they saw what they always wanted in the show. So you have the Good Feathers wanting to be respected, Hello Nurse wanting to be admired for her smarts more than her looks, Ralph seeing career aspirations beyond just a security guard, and of course, the Brain wants to take over the world. The humor we commonly associate with Animaniacs is all over the movie, with its clever wordplay and use of references. The writers even parodied the Time Warner merger as the ruthless corporate raider who rules Tiktakia takes over the kingdom of Warnerstock. It's that kind of subtle and topical comedy that allows Animaniacs to hold up. Sure, children won't get that joke, but they're not the only ones watching. Certainly, one of the standout comedic scenes is when the Warners finally come face to face with the evil King Salazar, and they proceed to mess with him with their brilliant Marx Brothers-like wit. For hardcore fans of the show, they even throw in characters that made memorable but few appearances, like Mr. Director, Ben Stein, and Bologna the Dinosaur. Even the will of morality turns up to deliver one final message. And what would an Animaniacs project be without at least one mention of its famous executive producer? The musical department, as headed by the late great Richard Stone, did a fantastic job on the songs. The melodies have that wonderful Carl Stalling influence, and there is never a forgettable or slow number in the bunch. They also do what a musical should and develop each character through the songs. Never Give Up Hope has an optimistic tone that runs through the entire movie and does a superb job of reintroducing us to the Animaniacs characters in this new environment. He's Got a Hey Penny is a fun, jaunty number, with the lyricists thinking of a lot of clever ways to rhyme with the catchy instrumental. And If I Could Have My Wish is an excellent way to give all the characters a spotlight and help develop them. However, the highlight and showstopper is the Wishing Star song, which sets the lyrics to the tune of the Hungarian Rhapsody. This was what Warner Brothers said to their marketing on, and it's no surprise, as it's incredibly high energy, thanks to both orchestration and the talents of the voice actors. What better way to send the characters off on their mad, 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 mad journey than one of the fastest paced classical pieces of music ever written? While Animaniacs was wall to wall jokes, Wacko's Wish added another element as it's surprisingly heartfelt. We really feel the connection between the Warners, especially with Dot falling ill, and Yakko and Wacko trying to be as optimistic as possible. Animaniacs will probably be the last thing one would expect to get emotional during, but directors Tom Ruger, Liz Holtzman, and Rusty Mills did an exceptional job of breaking out hearts while still keeping the Animaniacs tone. I don't think any of us expected this scene to appear in an Animaniacs project, and yet it manages to work very effectively. And in the end of the movie, when everybody gets their wishes, you just cannot help but smile as the journeys they began in 1993 are finally complete though also with the sadness that this would be the last time we would see these characters. Even though Animaniacs was a huge cash cow for Warner Brothers in the 90s, they apparently did not see fit to market Wacko's Wish a whole lot, 
and Eva made the strange decision to release it direct to video on December 31st. So, in addition to not giving it the theatrical release it deserved, it was released after the Christmas shopping season, where it would have certainly sold plenty of copies. Instead, it was mainly picked up by fans, the VHS quickly went out of print, relegated to eBay and thrift shops, and only got a DVD release in 2014. This is pretty much the last we've seen of anything Animaniacs, aside the television show DVD box sets. No merchandise, and outside of reruns on retro networks, there are no attempts to introduce this wonderful show and movie to the current generation. They didn't even get a cameo in Looney Tunes Back in Action, despite the water tower playing a pivotal role in one scene. In conclusion, Wacko's Wish is one of the best movies based on the television series, as it successfully brings the Animaniac characters to a longer runtime, gives them amazing songs to sing, and a touching and hilarious story to boot. It's simply 80 minutes of brilliant animated fun. Thanks for joining me for Animaniacs Month, and there's more to come in the rest of December. See you next time.